forests of a distant land is a magical world, unexplored until now. In the next series of sketches, we'll step into this curious realm to cover the nerves that supply the lower extremity. First stop, the Lumbosacral Forest, a place of sacred lumber, or trees, which is home to the Lumbe, a group of mysterious creatures. It's also the setting for our next topic, Lumbosacral Radiculopathy, a disease process involving the lumbar and or sacral nerve roots. Before we settle in, let me park this boat. Don't worry, I got myself a sketchy boat pilot license. Oh yeah, I never watched the sketch on piloting boats. Eh, it's just a minor scratch, no biggie. As you can see here, our boat has crashed into these tree roots to remind you that mechanical compression of one or more lumbosacral nerve roots from disc herniation or spondylosis is a common cause of lumbosacral radiculopathy. Other etiologies include congenital anomalies, infections, tumors, inflammatory, and vascular diseases. To understand the clinical presentation of lumbosacral radiculopathy, it's important to note that spinal nerves in the lumbosacral spine exit below their corresponding vertebral level. For instance, the L3 nerve root exits below the L3 vertebral body, L4 nerve root exits below the L4 vertebral body, and so on. With that in mind, an L3 to L4 disc level herniation, for example, would involve the L4 nerve root. The clinical findings of lumbosacral radiculopathy vary depending on the level of the nerve root or roots involved, but generally speaking, most patients present with low back pain that radiates or shoots down the leg with sensory and motor deficits in the distribution of the impinged nerve root. These falling feathers and our boat's broken motor are convenient reminders for sensory and motor impairments associated with lumbosacral radiculopathy. In addition to that, expect loss of deep tendon reflexes, shown here by this broken reflex hammer. 